Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. I would like to go over the email list application in this chapter. Notice we're asked to join. And actually, let me refresh this page. When the page loads, notice this is focus. This is the focus method. You generally, you see this a lot in forms. And this is done using JavaScript. You can do it now with HTML5. It's the autofocus property. But you also see it done with JavaScript. Notice there are three asterisks, meaning that all three fields are required. Now, the, the way that the author is essentially validating, and by validating I mean that certain requirements have to be met before the information is sent in the form. He is validating them all at once. You could do it differently. You can validate them one at a time. He's validating them all at once. Now, if I go back and I put something in here, and now I click the button again, it, it catches the first one, but it also I mean, it, it sees that the first one is has an entry, but the other two still don't. So every time we click, this program is checking all of the boxes at once. <coughs> Here again, you could have done it so that it checks one at a time and gives you that error message just on that one. There's different ways of doing it. All right, so um, now also he's checking that these two are the same. So we're also checking that you have the email addresses match and that every field is filled in. Alright, so let's take a look at the HTML here. And I am using the Komodo editor. And if I scroll down to the bottom, here's our form. And we have the ID and the, and the name. And here's the action. Actually, I just substituted a JavaScript alert for the action because in the JavaScript, when everything is filled out correctly, and actually you can see the JavaScript up here, here's our selector email form.submit. So we are actually going to be submitting the name value pairs to the action in the form tag. But since there is nothing really happening on the server, I'm just substituting an alert there. So here's our selector, okay, dollar email form. That is an ID selector. This is our jQuery selector. So after everything is validated, and we're starting out with our and is valid here, then we're going to submit everything. So let's take a look here at our jQuery code here. Notice the style sheets are in the head section. First, here is our reference to the jQuery library. Now in our second script block, here's our ready event, and here is the join list dot click. All right, so this is a an ID in our web page. Pound join list dot click. So when we click on that button, we are calling an anonymous function. We are going to retrieve the values and we are going to establish a variable is valid is true. And what we're going to do one by one, we're going to test those form fields. And if val and if they are if there's a problem, we're going to set is valid to false. And so if everything is okay, is valid will never be set to false. And then at the end, we're going to call is valid, and if it is true, then we're going to submit the form. Otherwise, we're going to be giving email, we're going to be giving messages. All right, so let's take a look at, at the HTML again. Here we have our, first of all, let's take a look at our input type equals button. There's ID equals join list. So this is the button that we're clicking. Okay, so here's our ID equals button. 
uh, our input type equals button, ID equals join list, and here's our jQuery code up here. All right, join list dot click. So when we click on the button, we're calling all this code. All right, let's take a look at the HTML. Here's our first input type equals text. There's email address one. On top of it, there's the label. Now, underneath, here's a span. ID equals email address error. So this is a placeholder. This is the placeholder where, where we're going to write that error message if there's a problem with this email address. This is the first email address. Here's our second email address, email address 2. Underneath that, there's the span that's going to placeholder for the error message in the event that we need to write that. Thirdly, here's our, fir here's our first name. There's the text, the input type equals text for the first name. So we have three placeholders. They all have IDs. And we have three input fields. All right, so what we're doing when we click the button, sorry about that. Let's see if I can. When we click the button, nice simple jQuery. I know these anonymous functions are a little hard to get the hang of the syntax, but you will. All right, first we're retrieving the values of the two email addresses. And here's dot .val. All right, remember with the document object model, it was dot .value. Now it's dot .val. And here again, this is our jQuery selector. All we need to do is to plug in the CSS selector. But here again, because it's CSS, it's pound. Remember what the author was doing in the past with the document object model. He had the dollar function, which allowed us to actually reference that get element by ID, but it was the ID value. This is the ID selector. jQuery uses our CSS selectors to uniquely identify, or not to uniquely identify, to identify the content that we wish to access. All right, now, var is valid equals true. All right, now, the first thing we're doing, if the email address 1 is equal to nothing, means if it's empty, now we're setting the error message. And we're setting that with, this is the, rep, this is the object, the selector, the email address dot error, that was that span dot text. So we're setting the text property in there. And we're also setting a value for the variable. Now we're saying is valid is false. Now, if it's correct in the else, what we're doing is we're setting the email error message to nothing. So we're clearing, clearing it out, essentially. Because remember, if, if, if it's a problem and you put an error message on the page, once that problem goes away, you need to remove that error message. So this is the text method. We're executing the text method on this selector. And that's the span for the fir that is holding the placeholder for the error message for the first email. We're doing the same thing to the second email. Okay? If it equals nothing, if there's nothing there, we have to tell the user that this field is required. We set the value to the is valid variable to false. But we have an else if. The elf, else if is we ha we're also making sure that both of them are correct or the same. And if not, then we're setting the error message on the second span, saying that they must be equal. And here again, we're setting is valid to false else, meaning both of them are okay, now we're clearing out the error message. Now we're doing the same thing to the first name. Okay, we're accessing the reference using the ID selector dot value if the value is equal to nothing. If it's empty, then we need to set an error message. And we also need to set that variable. Because as long as that variable is false, that form is not going to be executed. If they did have an entry, then we want to make sure that error message is cleared out. 
So as long as the value of is valid is false, nothing's going to happen other than the error messages, and the user has to keep on fixing it before he can submit it. Once there is no more false if is valid, and that means it's true, then we submit the form. So let me reload. The first time we click the button, it checks all three of them at once. Once Once I put something in the, this box and I click the button, it still checks all three of them at once. This time, the first if is true. Therefore, if there was an error message, it clears it out. So we have an if for the first, an if for the second. The if for the second also checks to see if they're identical. The if for the third checks the third. Now the if for the second not only checks that there is something in there, but it also checks to see if they're identical. That's on the else, the if else. So now I go back and I fix that. I still need to put something here. And there's my form is submitted. So this is the overview of this procedure for validating the email application.